Next thing we're gonna do is if you look on page 74, we're gonna talk about one of my favorite events in American history. Middle of the 1983 season, Montevideo, Minnesota. Kenny Easley became my favorite player. I wrote, just asked for an autograph picture. When I got something from him, that was, that was really neat. I showed it to anybody who'd look at it. <laughs> I don't know why I answered Bob. And not only did I answer him, I sent him an autographed picture, which <laughs> I've never done. This was a divine thing. 20 years later, this guy ends up being my most ardent supporter. And I had never met Bob in my life and still have not met him to this day. This is a love story. The story of a player's love for the game. The story of a boy's love for his favorite player. And the story of how love from just one person triumphs over all things. On behalf of what Kenny Easley has done for us as a man, i like to present him with this game ball. Football was never work to me. Football was just fun. I dreamed about playing football. I mean, some people dream about other things when they go to sleep at night. I always dreamed about football. One time, one time, one time. I loved football, and football loved me best. Back to pass. Fires one that's going to be picked off by Easley. He's on his way up the sideline. They'll never catch him. Kenny Easley was a mythical being. He did things that had never been done before. What a force he was. The guy was one of the most incredible hitters in the history of the NFL, the enforcer. Well, I'm vicious. I play the game in a, in a, vicious, in a vicious manner. I'm not out there to hurt anyone, but my game is an aggressive type of game. Play hard and hit people hard. You don't even have to look at the numbers when you see a receiver get hit the way he got hit. It was number 45, Kenny Easley. Is he explosive or what? He also was one of the great coverage safeties in the history of the NFL. That's what Kenny Easley does best. He can cover a lot of ground while the ball is in the air. Pass is tipped. It is intercepted, Kenny Easley. The ball skills that he possessed were incredible. Throws a field, picked off by Seattle at the 45. Easley will go all the way for a touchdown. The player Bob Copang calls a mythical being hardly seemed mortal. Kenny Easley was drafted by the NBA's Chicago Bulls and was a three-time All-American safety. I didn't know what you said. All the plane? <laughs> no, man. <laughs> In 1984, Easley told the Seahawks he wanted to return punts and turned out to be one of the league's best. Kenny Easley came into tonight leading the AFC with a 13-7 average in punt return. Then there was the time he got fed up with sports writers and moonlighted as a magazine publisher. Inside the Seahawks, I got my dad to subscribe to it for me. I read the thing cover to cover. I thought that was pretty cool that a, that a player actually did that. I had no business doing that. I was inspired to do it because I kept having these visions. Even uh, Dave Craig and Steve Largent did features with us. It was a good mag. Three months after starring in his fifth Pro Bowl, Picked off Kenny Easley. The Seahawks traded Easley to the Cardinals in the spring of 1988. A routine physical revealed a numbing prognosis. The doctor says to me, look, I got no other way to tell you this. Your, your kidneys are failing. We need to put you in the Arizona hospital right now. Just like that, 28 years old, I'm out of the league. My career is done. It was a tough ordeal. If I didn't get the transplant, I was going to die. There was a period for about 15 years when I lost my love for football. I didn't watch high school, college, pro, no kind of football at all. Football seemed finished with Easley as well. For almost 30 years, his name was never mentioned during Hall of Fame deliberations. People had forgotten about him, like he almost didn't exist before. In the 1980s, Kenny Easley was the only defensive player on the All-Decade team not to be in the Hall of Fame. 
I reached out to the guy who was in charge of field goals. If I can interview Kenny Easley for a story, would you publish it? And they were like, yeah. 33 years after he wrote his hero for an autograph, Bob Kopang sent him an email. This time, his request was more bold. He asked Easley for an interview, an interview with a high school teacher for a story to be published on a Seahawks fan page. Bob told me in an email, he thought that I had a raw deal. If he could help Kenny Easley in any way he could, then he was gonna do that. I was just gonna write one where are they now type of story. I got carried away and I turned it into a four part series. My fourth article focused on why he should be in the Hall of Fame. Kenny Easley was a Hall of Fame player who had a Hall of Fame career. This mythical being once played for the Seahawks and was the 1981 AFC Defensive Rookie of the Year, 1983 AFC Defensive Player of the Year, 1984 NFL Defensive Player of the Year. When I saw the piece on seagulls or field goals, and I said, Bob, I want to put you in contact with a guy named Frank Cooney with the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So I contacted him, he read it, and he said, great. And you know, I, I said, you know, I could do something a lot better than this. Then Bob decided he was gonna get verification. What do you think about Kenny Easley in the Hall of Fame? All of these guys that Bob Copain called, they gave him a statement. I talked to over 30 people my aim was to write a story. Frank Cooney could show it to the other members of the Hall of Fame selection committee. I talked with former Los Angeles Rams coach, John Robinson. He made the comment that Kenny Easley had a presence about him on the football field like LeBron James. Ronnie Lott has always said Kenny Easley is one of the greatest safeties he's ever seen. He said, over the years in my pursuit at trying to be the best, he was someone that he felt like he was always chasing after. Hey, baby, let's go out there like a bunch of crazy stuff. I got a hold of Lawrence Taylor after school on a, on a Friday. LT said he was probably the best athlete I've ever seen. That's gonna carry a little more weight than me just saying, I think Kenny Easley should be in the Hall of Fame. Next thing I know, I get a call from Frank Cooney. I just want to tell you that you're the senior finalist for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He said, you can thank Bob Copain. Here I am doing a bus. That might be the greatest letter I have ever opened. I've never met Kenny Easley. I've never even talked to him on the phone. Everything we've done has been via email. I don't think the 10-year-old me ever would have really comprehended something like that could happen. This whole experience has been really cool in terms of like what I'm going to be able to tell my students. From the Seattle Seahawks, Kenny Eastley. You can make a difference if you work hard enough at something. Kenny Eastley, Hall of Famer number 306, is indeed grateful to Frank Cooney and a very fine young man named Bob Coupain, now a Minnesota school teacher who wrote to Kenny Easley as an eight-year-old boy and grew to become a fan and unrelenting supporter. Together, Frank and Bob crafted a narrative to re-examine the candidacy. Thus, I stand before you tonight. Uh, you, you didn't doing, have to man? say my name in there. I didn't expect that. Holy cow. I like having all these guys text me. That's like, all right. Holy That's all right. cow. I love football and football loved me back. If I had to do it all over again, I would do it the same way. I wouldn't change anything about it at all. Being a fan of somebody, you don't really expect that you one day could help them somehow with something. Don't ever give up. For anybody in life who says, it's too late for me, it's never really too late.